Here's my babies feeding our little babies. You in charge today, honey? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, little Jabba. We we'll feed the little babies. Early. Oh, darling, the needs must. Come on, baby. Oh, no way, they've grown overnight. <laughs> Good size of them. <laughs> what do you think, little Jabba? Baby, she's hungry. <laughs> oh, yeah, them? you're hungry. <laughs> Straight in there, darling. Yeah. You really are the mummy, aren't you? Mm-hmm. So I said we get the crickets, we mash them up like we would do. Uh, so, we get uh, the, uh, uh. so we get the crickets, we mash them up just like the parent bird would do. And partially sort of digest them almost by pulverising them. Put a little bit of vitamin powder in there as a bit of calcium because they need calcium for their bones. And then Scarlet very carefully acts like the parent bird feeds them. This one. <laughs> God, they get really bold now, aren't they? Mm-hmm. They steal it from each other. They do, the cheeky monkeys, aren't they? They really are trying to climb one on top of the other now, aren't they? <laughs> the little tufty bits are almost gone. Yeah, they've all got very smooth heads now. They do, look, and their adult plumage is really coming through now. They look really beautiful. They get that lovely blue tinge that house martins get. It's good. Crumbs, that little tiny one that we had, the really quiet one, it's really hard yeah. to tell who he is. It, I think it's the most mature one. Oh, okay, it will be. Because he's the quietest now. Mm hmm. This chap here on the right, you mean? Yeah, this one. This yeah, one here. Yeah. Really Sorry. <laughs> Crumbs, they are like little tiny velociraptors, aren't they? Thank you. <laughs> so these are typical babies, aren't they? All they're doing is like every other baby does. They eat, they poo, and they sleep. And their poo, as you can see, is sort of dotted around on the floor. So we have to come along, we have to clear it all out. Because that's what the yeah. parents would do. They'd use their bills to pick up the poo, and then they take it out and they throw it away. Because no one likes a dirty nest. The babies even have to come to work with me. We simply can't take the risk of leaving them by themselves. They, because they have to be fed every couple of hours, we just can't take the risk of them starving or having issues. So everywhere we go, I have to take them with us. Welcome to the office, babies. <laughs> oi, 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 oi. Come on, come on, come on. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It's hungry. It's feeding time again, isn't it? Flipping egg. When they start squabbling like this, it shows that they're just getting really, really hungry. It's called sibling rivalry. So I think it's time that I gave them a little bit more food. Come here, cheeky little ones. Come on, cheeky little ones. These baby birds, they suffer from a thing called sibling rivalry, which of course is really common and really well known in humans. Here you go, my darling. But lots and lots of animals have it, particularly baby birds in the nest. And it's when one often takes the lead and it feeds a lot more than the other ones and as a result it gets a lot bigger, a lot bolder and it essentially bullies the other ones. And what can happen with the other ones is sometimes oh, they can actually die from starvation, from being bullied. Hey, my sweet. So what I have to make sure of, as mum, that none of them get left out. They all get individually fed as much as each other. Because at the end of the day, I've got plenty of food to give them and there's no reason why any of these guys should get bullied or starve. Hey, go little chapa. Mm -hmm. A few days on and they're getting even bigger. Look at that. Look at the adult plumage on them now. Oh, yeah. You can yeah. come first. Oi. Oi, oi, oi. I love the whispering. Oi, oi, oi. Okay, you can. So gently, gently, my sweet. There we go. That's it. Mm. Oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs> they're wolfing it down. Look at the feathers, bro. Look at the primaries. It's so pretty. Those big, long feathers look coming out the back. Yeah, hello. Oh, little ones. Lovely. Oh, lovely. Oh, there's so much. So that's two. So what we need to do, the reason we're doing this on the hands now is so that we can actually keep count on who's eaten what, can't we? So if we say give this oh. little chap, we give him four, yeah. pop him back, and we'll try someone else. He did a poo. Oh, did he? Yeah. <laughs> where did the poo go? Um, he leant over the edge of my hand. Oh, did he? But where did it go then? On the floor. On that's not number three. We'll pull that piece of grass out, honey. There we go. Just pull the glass out, well done, sweet. Good girl. That's it. Go. Just pop oh, look at that little chopper. He's getting oh, keeps on back. He's getting so big, look, he's so like a proper martin now. Yeah, okay, good boy. Is it going over there, Eve? I'm good, I'm just trying to get Look at that delicious lunch, look, all mashed up crickets. <laughs> there you go, lovely chap. Oh, beautiful. So number number four. four, yeah, let's pop him down. Let me get another one. Yeah. This little chap, if you look, he's slightly younger, isn't he? Look, you can see he's still got his down on his back. He's just oh, as hungry. Just though. as hungry, if not more so, because he's a bit smaller, isn't he? God, they are so cute. Look at that little face. This is his second one. Yes. Oh, and two again. Oh. Are you hungry? Yeah, you're hungry. Crumbs, they're such gannets now, aren't they? <laughs> Number three. Oh, no, you oh, fell. Is he, oh, I think he's still got one. Is he? Oh, maybe he's done. 
crumbs. That's amazing if he's done. Do you let them settle? Yeah, oh, old crumbs, yeah, he's ravenous. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Oh, little you, chapper. Still, yeah, you're hungry. Okay, so now <laughs> and is that number four? Uh, yeah. Now let's try the one that only ate two. Good yeah. And I hold it. Isn't he that one? Yeah, yeah he's this They're one. still trying to fly. They, um, Stop. they keep... Oh, no, no, no. God, the size of that one's wing. Oi, oi, oi. God, it's huge. God, it's doing so well. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'll feed him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Let's give him... See if he wants two more. Yeah, because he, um, he didn't eat. There he is. Oh, there's... Oh, just let them go and get it. Mm, I'll get one now. Oh, maybe he's full. Oh, oh no, yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there. I've noticed over the past couple of days with the babies getting so much bigger that after we fed them, they quite often walk around backwards in circles. And after they walked around backwards for a bit, they stick their bottom in the corner and they do a poo. And then the penny dropped. Of course, when they're inside their tiny little nest, they walk around backwards trying to find the exit so that they can stick their bottoms outside and do a poo. Because the babies are getting to a stage now, a stage of maturity, whereby they don't want to be pooing in their own nest anymore. Of course, before the parents have been coming in and clearing it out, but now the babies are maturing, their brains are developing, and they've realized that, hey, we don't want a dirty house. We've got to look after ourselves, as every child hopefully should learn. They've got to look after their bedroom. In this case the babies are learning that they need to do their poos out of their little tiny window and so of course I've had this idea I've got to redesign the container that they live in I've got to make it more like their actual nest with a hole in it so that they can actually do their poos out the window and carry on with their mental development so this is what I've been doing and I've got it right down here what I've done is I've got a shoebox. And the great thing about shoeboxes is obviously the volume inside is a lot bigger than their little container they're in because I can see they're clearly getting bigger. They're opening their wings a lot more now and flitting around. And so I'm gonna give them a bit more space. And what I've done is I've actually divided it with this piece of plastic and I've taped it in, in position. And I've cut this little tiny U-shaped hole in here. So this will be their little nesting area, their little living area, their living room as it were. And this area over here represents the outside of their nest. And what I'm hoping is, by flipping it up like this, they'll live in this area here. And rather than doing the usual routine of doing their poos in the corners, I'm hoping they're going to wander around and they'll find this little tiny aperture here, think it's the edge of their nest burrow, and actually do their droppings over the top. I'm going to fill this area with cat litter. And so, of course, if they do do their poos in there, I can easily pick it up. And I'm hoping this area is going to remain a lot more tidy. So we shall see. It's all part of the experiment, isn't it, really? Because, honestly, I've hunted around and spoken to lots of people, lots of wildlife rehabilitators about what's going on here with these babies, and no one can give me a definitive answer. So you guys are living the experiment just as much as we are. So it's all looking really positive. I'm going to pop them in here very shortly. I'm going to put, lots, obviously, some cat litter in, some dressing stuff in here. Fill this full of cat litter. I've also made a little lid for it as well. I've put a little perspex section in it as well, which represents the outside. So this is the outside world to them. And of course, they're going to be inside that burrow just like they would be in their real nest. And so I'm hoping that the light coming in here is going to attract them to this spot here for them to hopefully stick their bottoms out and do poos. So I'm going to go and pop them in now and we will see tomorrow just how they're getting on. Fingers crossed. Wish us luck. Here I am sitting at work trying to focus on what I'm actually meant to be doing. And I've got this beautiful, beautiful wittering going on in the background. And of course, that wittering is caused by these little guys just down here. Hello, my lovely ones. Look at you. I think they're calling their mummy for their lunch. Or should I say their mid-afternoon snack? Because they've had their lunch about three times over. Look at them, though. Look, peering out the edge. Isn't that brilliant? Hang on. Buy very carefully. Lift the lid. I can hopefully... Them a bit better. Hello, lovely ones. Hello, darlings. Hello, darlings. Is it lunchtime? See as well, there's a nice little pile of poo developing down here, so they're starting to learn the ropes as far as pooing out the door's concerned. So we're all doing really, really well. It is such a privileged position to actually be here like this, to be at the edge of a nest site and actually witness every hour of every day what truly happens within one of these very rare nest boxes. Because at the end of the day, trying to get close to baby Martins is so incredibly hard because they're so nervous and the parents are so twitchy. And also as well, legally, you're not allowed to do it. They are totally... Oh, look, he's doing the backward walk. Look, there we go. See him doing the backward dance? That means hopefully he's going to reverse up and do a poo soon. That's brilliant. Look at that. He's trying to find the edge. It's over here, look. Come right towards us. Do a poo in the lens. That'd be excellent. 
just think one day, hopefully, in the not too distant future, you guys will be leaving. You're leaving your nest and you'll be being released by me with your own kind. That is going to be a really cool day. I really, really hope all goes well. Look at that, flapping the wings, getting those flight muscles ready for takeoff, extending the wings as far as they can, cleaning up the primary feathers. Everything is absolutely gearing up for them to leave this nest soon. And it'll be such a privilege to actually see them finally fly off. How cool is that? 